I'm Mark Pitchers. Wader wearing, tea drinking, beer trimming, carp freak. I've been an angler for over 30 years and I've caught carp from waters far and wide, big and small. For me, it doesn't matter where, as long as the challenge is exciting and inspiring. But now the tables have turned and it's over to you, the public, to assign my next mission on Fox's Facebook page. It's not exactly the easiest challenge, is it? Rivers and lakes, rigs and baits. He fell to the cat meat. There's been a number of incredibly tough challenges during this series. Have you been drinking the icer again? Some of which I've knocked out the park. Challenge completed. Others have dealt me a devastating blow. But I'm still here and ready to pick up any gauntlet that is thrown down. This cart freak is not giving up without a fight. This is the challenge. I thought you were getting a new van. Yeah, this is it. Hey, ta-da! <laughs> Good, isn't it? I hate it. Is that snobbish of me? It's not being a snob, is it? Just everything about it. But it's been a snob, isn't it? I just, I just thought every car these days had central locking, that was all, but I thought every car these days had a light in the back that worked. Every morning, I've got to pump up the tyre. It's got a flat, it's got a flat tyre. It hasn't even got a key fob. I've got to, it's got actually, you've actually got to twist, like, actually put your hand in it and twist it. It's, like, it's old school. It's not good, no good in the dark though, isn't it? And you've got to be somewhere in a rush and you like that and sticking it everywhere. But on the plus side, there was half a pack of uneaten uh, jammy dodgers underneath the seat. So, you know, you win some, you lose some, don't you? <laughs> and, and the uh, fuel cap doesn't stay in. You say, so they like, touch it, uh, just like, oh, there it goes. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually what happened. That's, 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 that's how you get, yeah. You just like, look at it and it just falls out. <laughs> Have you actually caught anything since using that van? No. I've, I've had this high van now, I don't know, about a month. And literally my catch rate has just gone since I've had this van. It's like the carp are embarrassed to be caught by someone driving a Fiat Doblo. What's up carp freaks, it's challenge time again. And as per usual, you wrote in with your suggestions in your hundreds, but the winning suggestion came in from Adam Booth. Now I actually know Adam, he's one of the syndicate members on my lake. So yeah, cheers Adam. His challenge is called the Cack Handed Challenge. And he goes on to say, as we all know, Mark is the king of all things carpy. Oh, thank you. But surely being ambidextrous has to be right at the very top of all things carpy. Hmm, not, not really sure about that. Um, having seen Mark fish, he always claims that the number one rule to success is location. The next is accuracy, and that failing to get your baited rig on the spot in the first cast can lead to complete failure. The challenge is that Mark has to cast, play, and land his quarry using only his left cack hand. This also includes all forms of baiting up. Mark can choose the location, but Harry has the final say on what Mark has to catch at that venue. So yes, I was able to choose the location and I have chosen Thorny Mere here in Cambridgeshire. So Harry, what is my target, please? Well, um, seeing as you've chosen Thorny Mere and you've never fished it before, I thought I'd, I'd go sort of lenient on you. Um, three fish yeah. is, is, is all, so Okay. It's pretty standard. That's all right. Yeah. That's, it's, yeah. It's fine. Just, you know, one of them's got to be a 30 and that's all. Oh, <laughs> that's cheeky. Yeah. That is cheeky. That's not going to be easy. No, well, it's not supposed to be, is it? That's, that's, that's going to be tough. That is going to be tough. But, um, yeah, I, I picked this venue because there are big fish in here, so. Yeah, and it's and got a few. Yeah, it's got a few, so. Let's crack on then, eh? Go yeah, find them. Got the Polaroids on, go for a walk and uh, try and find some carp. Big carp. Big carp. Big 30 pound carp. <laughs> Come on. Oh, 
Well, before I start thrashing the water to a foam, trying to find a clear spot with my left hand, I just thought I'd show you the swim I've chosen and also why, why I've chosen it. Um, I'm on a little island here, and there's actually a gap kind of on, on both sides, facing, facing in, one in this, this bay here, another one in the open water behind me. Um, now, this, this bay I've got in front of me now, this is the, I've been told, is the, the deeper area of the lake, and it has done a few fish recently. We are now moving into October, the temperatures have started to drop, so it stands to reason that there would be fish in this slightly deeper water. Plus, we have actually seen a couple of fish here um, when we've been walking around. We've also seen a few fish on the other side as well. <laughs> so, uh, where I've got my bed here, I can literally have a rod in front of me and behind me. It's going to give me great scope, it's going to give me lots of possibilities. Um, so hopefully if I do mess this swim up, I've always got that one to fall back on. <laughs> so uh, yeah, <laughs> right, let's get the, uh, the leading rod out and uh, let's get started. Let's put my bank stick, let's get these in first. You're putting it on. <laughs> I am, Anna. I am genuinely nervous to cast out. I genuinely am. It's it's terrifying me. The thought of casting out left-handed. It is terrifying. It's going to give you a massive disadvantage. Uh, yeah, huge. It's just going to go. Off. <laughs> Big, that's it. <laughs> I suppose I've got to change my handles over. Oh, it just looks weird already, doesn't it? I absolutely dreaded this, you know. Even getting like the line to come to you, it's come down the wrong side of your finger already. Oh, this feels so awkward. Right. <laughs> okay, right, here it goes. Oh, I felt the drop, I got a drop. <laughs> right, okay, so now, yeah, that was my warm up one. What's up, buddy? You just don't really want to. Funny that, isn't it? I wonder why. I, wonder why. I felt the lead down both times, though. Reeling in's okay. Reeling in's actually not that hard. But the casting's just horrific. Right, I think I've got the feel for it now. Right, this is it. Ready? Go. That was pretty good. Thank you. I've surprised myself, I'm not going to lie. Oh, I just ate a fish. Right, okay, so I've done there, literally. <laughs> just cast out, felt the lead down miraculously, it landed with a proper donk, lifted up to sort of lift and drop the lead down again. And as I've done so, the rod just gone like that. Well, actually, didn't it went in my left hand. But um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's encouraging. So I'm going to put it in the clip again. So which hand do I put it in the clip with? <laughs> Right, okay. At least I'm in the clip now. Be helpful if I actually hit the clip though. <laughs> Jesus! That's everything within like this bay just spoke now, isn't it? Ledge just crashed in the swim. <sighs> I really don't want to take too many more casts, especially after. After. Uh, reeling it over a fish, there's obviously fish in the area. I'm just a bit aware that every cast I make is just having an effect on the swim, really. I reckon, oh, I've just hit another fish, no! Right, there's obviously a lot of fish here. Um, I don't want to disturb the swim anymore. Oh, dare I take one more cast? I mean, I'm going to be spotted, aren't I? Oh, that was terrible. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Christ. It's literally like learning to cast all over again. Yeah. Well, I've had a bit of a, a lead around out there to the, the best of my left-handed ability anyway. And 
I've got two spots in mind which are both exactly the same distance, both clipped up at the same distance. I've got a, a deep, silty hole out there and a couple of rod lengths to the left of that is a really nice clean gravelly area. Now I can see my, my spot in not, not being the greatest, not being the most accurate. So if I'm clipped up at the same distance, we've got a bit of a right to left side wind going on here. If I try and land everything on that, on that deep hole, chances are a few of them are going to go up the left anyway. So in doing so, I'm actually baiting my left hand rod unintentionally, but also intentionally. So that, that's my thinking. So every miscast I do is actually doing me a favour. <laughs> that's, there's method in my madness and I, I think, I think as long as I keep trying to land everything in that deep hole, odd spot that goes left, gets caught in the side wind, I'll bait my left hand rod. Boom! That's an idea, isn't it? That's, that's good thinking. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Are you happy with your casting? No, it's abysmal. It's absolutely abysmal. What I've just oh, done... I thought it looked all right. Really? Yeah. Well, what I've just done there in, what, 10, 12 casts? No, I, I could have done that in three or four casts, built up an idea of what's out there. Yep, that's enough. There's fish in front of me. Let's not disturb it anymore. Instead, three or four times that ledge just crashed in and... Oh. But it is what it is. Well, because this swim is pretty tight, I was just thinking there how I'm going to, uh, where I'm going to put my distance sticks. So I'm going to struggle to get one by the rod tip and one by the, by the butt. It was actually Harry that came up with the really ingenious idea of having, uh, doing half wraps. So I'll have one by the tip and one, uh, one stick by the spigot here. Good thinking, Harry. Then. Right, okay, so well, that wasn't bad. <laughs> <laughs> right then. Oh no. Oh no. Might as well just throw a grenade in the water. Jesus. I just arsed up the cast completely <laughs> and it's just crashed in. It almost hit the clip. I was like willing it on. Please hit the clip, please hit the clip. It probably landed just a few feet short of the clip and went boom, a big splash, tidal wave everywhere. And oh no, right, I'm gonna stop that and get it out of the way. I'd rather it land nowhere near than somewhere near. Do you know when, like, you, you, you sort of your early days of, of fishing, when you used to have nightmare sessions quite regularly? I'm sure we all did when we first began. Like, every now and then you'd have a nightmare session, and that, the, the more you do it, the, the less frequent they become, don't they? This is turned into a nightmare session. It just is. It's just. I guess I mean fussy. It's only two spots out of place, but. Oh, no, 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 no. Ah, that one wasn't good. One more, just go there, and all is good. Oh no, no! Why did it go there? a little maggot rig here all tied up I've got about 10 maggots there just threaded on the hair blow a piece of cork and a small mesh PVA bag of maggots I'm all wrapped up to the 22 and a half half wraps um, so all I need to do now is land this on the money and it'll be right over that, uh, that baited area right just try not to mess this up
Yep, that messed up. Okay, take two. <laughs> I am getting really, really frustrated now. What happened there? It was just a, a <laughs> cast. It was, it was just about long and long and short of it, really. <laughs> Christ. Right, don't think about it. I'm just going to do it. Right, here you go. Don't think about it. Just do it. Just, just no. Everything, just everything. Literally everything. What? What was wrong with Yeah, it, was, it wasn't where I wanted it. Oh, for Christ, sir. I haven't even got one rod in the water. I haven't got one rod in the water yet. This is it, because I'm proper losing my patience now. This, this is the most frustrating challenge we've ever done, without a doubt. Oh, yeah. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's almost 10 p.m. now, and I'm not sure how I'm feeling going into tonight, to be honest. The only thing that's playing on my mind is, is the amount of disturbance it's taken to get, to get the rods in. I don't know, we're just going to have to wait and see. I, I just hope it hasn't completely ruined my chances. I, I have heard fish out there, so I know there are fish still in the area, but I honestly don't know. I really don't know what's going to happen here. We're just going to have to uh, just have to wait and see. As far as I can see. Well, good morning. It's uh, just after nine o'clock and nothing's happened at all. Um, I'm kind of not that surprised in a way. Uh, for whatever reason, I kind of thought to myself it would be daytime bites. Um, but I, I was still quite confident of a, of a first light, a first light or early morning bite, but that obviously hasn't, hasn't developed. So a change is afoot. I am now moving my right hand rod. That was the rod that was in that, that deeper water. Um, the sun was out. It, it was quite a bright sun, <laughs> sunny morning. Um, and I think them fish are gonna be in the, in the shallower, shallower water. I now, now know that yesterday, the areas where I, where I saw fish, I'm having a, a few casts around, and I'll know the areas where we saw them yesterday were that, that shallower water. So I'm going to come off that spot I baited with maggots. I've switched over to just a very standard pop-up rig with a trimmed down yellow Northern Special pop-up. And I'm just going to cast small PVA mesh bags of, of crumbled up boilie and maggots to an area where I saw a couple of fish show yesterday. The plan really is just to try and nick a bite. 
I'm probably going to recast every couple of hours just to try and nick a bite. Hopefully when that does happen, I can then build a plan around that. But for now, I just want to get up and running and get a fish under my belt. Hey up, what we got here, youth? Ah, someone's been on the old dog biscuits. Nothing gets past me. Look at them. I'll see what's been going on. Have you brought any dog biscuits? I have actually. Have you? Not them ones, not this particular brand though. Oh. Maybe that's where, that might be the edge I need. I'll have them. So we'll have. Uh... <laughs> God, lots of swans, isn't there? So what's the, what is the need for that amount of swans? I've never seen so many swans in one huddle like that, have you? Look at them. What's a, the what's a collective word for a, a, a group of swans? I know a group of geese is a gaggle. Is it? Do you know what a group of crows is? It's a murder of crows. A murder? Mm, I don't know what it is for swans. What would you call a group of swans? <laughs> well, not, nothing that I can really say. An asshole of swans. <laughs> I don't know, what could you, you, there's nothing you can really say, is there? There's a lot of them though, isn't there? All there. Well, I've got a stunt of gas canister cosy. I wondered if you wanted it. Well, no, I know, but you're, like, you're the sort of person who actually spends time to actually take your empty gas bottle out of the cosy well, yeah. and put your full one back into the cosy. Well, yeah, because it'd look ridiculous. It doesn't. But it obviously does. How? Because look at it, it's grey and orange, and why would you want that? Why don't a multicoloured item next to all your camelite luggage and nature's camouflage itself of grass and foliage to have a gaudy gas canister on show? It's just vile. <laughs> Well, I'm quite happy with having... Well, that says a lot about you then, doesn't it? It's been ages since we've had Bovril on the challenge. Literally, every time we've had Bovril, we've smashed the challenge, basically. Well, actually, well, I say that. Darts won, smashed. Higher or lower, smashed, but you cheated and made me lose. <laughs> and this, this one. So, I think it's time to bring out the big guns, isn't it? I've forgotten what a Bovril grunt is. What if I've forgotten how to do it? It'll just come naturally, won't it? There she is. There she is. She never left. <laughs> oh, that's good. I feel better already. In lands with sunburned skies Where hopes are lost and dreams have died I feel so deep inside A tiny flame fills me with pride Oh, there's one. Just over the back of them swans. Right, so I haven't really seen that many fish at all today. But that's the third one I have seen over on that far side along them reeds. So I think it's time now that I reeled in the rods I'm just gonna get a few essentials together, a bucket of bait, a few bits and bobs. I'm gonna go over there and see if we can, uh, let's see if we can get up and running because this is, this is going nowhere fast. Yeah, let's do that now. Actually, could do that again because I think I had a snot bubble came out my nose at the end. I don't think it did. I felt it, it did. felt it pop and it landed, went on my cheek. Okay, so here we are, just round the corner from where I've been fishing previously. And I've just uh, shimmied up that tree to have a, have a look in this little bay here. And I've already seen enough to tell me this is where I want to be. So rather than casting out now, then having to reel in and go back and getting all my kit and then setting up in a rush and casting out in the dark like I ended up doing last night, I'm gonna go and get all the rest of my kit now and get everything, get everything sorted because um, there's a lot of fish over here. This is looking really encouraging. So uh, yeah, let's go and get packed down now quickly and uh, get back and get cracking. I'll wait for forever in a day when the snow falls in May.
Landed soft as sh**. You're not even alive. Get off. Just, just forget it. Just literally forget it. Right, don't even care anymore. Just get out there. Couldn't feel a drop. Never mind. It's either in weed or it's not. There we go. 50-50. Not even going to put my alarm on. <laughs> what is the point? What is the point? I'm getting, I'm getting so wound up, honestly. Why? Why? I'm just thrashing. It. it should just be, oh yeah, there we go. Done. Mm. Yeah, it's not though, is it? But even when it lands where I want it to land, I just I can't feel that drop left-handed. Unless, unless I feel it, I, I just don't know. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've got all three rods in position and I actually feel probably the most confident I've been since I've been here. I've had a bit of a change of tactics. Um, I've ditched the maggot approach, but that's mainly because I've seen fish cruising around fairly close to the margin to my left here and also on the reedy margin in the right hand side of the swim. Um, that's enabled me to, to bait up by hand, um, left hand. Um, so no spotting, no disturbance, just a case of, of, of plopping a few baits in, walking around, pop, plopping a few baits in over the top of the rig. So disturbance has been kept fairly minimal. My right hand rod is on a, an, an area um, quite silty. So I've gone with my my favoured hinge stiff rig. That's what I'm using here. The boom section, that's made of 25 pound Cortex tungsten. That's a, a new material that I've been using for, for the best part of a year actually now. Um, very heavy, sinks really well, superbly camouflaged on the bottom. And uh, yeah, it's fast become my kind of go-to hook link of choice really. The uh, stiff section that's tied um, with doubled over 30 pound rigidity, that in effect basically creates a, an extension of the hook and I think that that stiffness gives, gives the carp something very difficult to deal with, it has a hard time ejecting it and, and for me that is how I would fish it, the, the anti-eject properties are absolutely superb, as soon as that goes in the mouth it is such a hard time ejecting it and, and the hook holds are absolutely bang on. Um, and yeah. That's it, that's the hinge stiff rig. The other rods are on fairly clear gravel spots. Uh, and in those situations, I think a pop-up just looks a bit too blatant. So I've just gone with a, a, a pretty straightforward uh, bottom bait snowman type approach. Um, again, the hook link is Cortex 25 pound uh, tungsten. Um, got a wide gape, beaked point hook. And the hook bait there, I've got an Odyssey Triple X uh, dumbbell bottom bait, and I've just topped it off there with a with a small eight mil pop up, uh, and that's it. It doesn't get much more simple than that. Um, those are basically the only two rigs that I use anywhere, or variations of them at least. I just keep the rigs very very simple. For me, that isn't the the be all and end all. Uh, I use reliable components, nice sharp hooks, heavy leads to, to make sure the hook goes home. The most important thing is being able to put them rigs there with minimal disturbance, something which I haven't been able to do, um, and in as few as fewer casts as possible. And again, I, I've just not been able to achieve that. There has been fish in this area from the moment we've got here, and it's 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 all them casts, all that disturbance, which has undoubtedly cost me fish. I, I know that's why I haven't caught anything. Um, I, I want to do everything in as few a cast as possible and I, I just haven't been able to achieve that and it is so incredibly frustrating. But we're in a new swim. Uh, I'm filled with new confidence and I, I am actually quite hopeful that something's going to unfold tonight. Fingers crossed. Look at that, there's a slug curled up, it looks like a turd.
On my rod handle. No, I can't be having that. Get off. Oh, look what it's done. I can change, I feel the turn. What's left to love, I know I'll learn. And this love won't take me down. I know I was bitter, bitter and too proud. seemed pretty lifeless over in the swim so I reeled the rods in and come for a bit of a walk and I managed to shimmy up a little tree and I could see a group of fish just 10-15 yards out on the end of this bitterly cold north northwesterly wind. Um, it's like the last place you'd expect to, to find them really but here they are in just a few feet of water on the edge of this cold wind. Um, that's all I'm going to do now. I'm going to try and sneak into position and try and plop two, two rods out without, without spooking them. Um, this really is last chance, so there, there isn't much time left. And to be honest, I'm not even thinking about passing the challenge now. I'm just thinking about catching a carp. If I catch a carp, to me, that is, that is as good as a pass because the lake hasn't fished well at all. We've had um, a great change in, in conditions over the, the past 48 hours. We had, a, we had a nice low pressure system at the weekend. That's been replaced by mega high air pressure, really cold temperatures on the nights, and, and now we've got cold temperatures during the day. So if I, can, if I can rescue a blank, I'll be happy. Right, let's get going. See, that's left-handed, isn't it? Is that left-handed? <laughs> oh, no. No. No, 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 no. I don't even know what to say. Someone moved my handles around, I probably picked it up all... I don't think that made any difference, but... The rod's been in the water... five minutes. And... Um, I've just had the first bite of the session, and it's come off. And to say I'm gutted is... Is an understatement. I uh, <sighs> I still have to say. Ah, oh, right. There's time. We've got time. There's yeah. The rod's been in the water. It has been in the water five minutes. The rod's been in the water five minutes, and I've just lost one. So we've got about five hours of the session remaining. So. Hopefully there'll be another chance. I've found fish, I've put a rig there, and it's gone. So I'm trying to make myself feel better. And really, I just want to sit down and cry. What can you do? What can you do? What can you do?
Do it here because it might rattle off and that would be mint. <laughs> Spoke's off the line. That's game over. If it wasn't game over, that's game over. Well, that is it for this challenge. My time is up and I'm absolutely gutted, to be honest. Um, gutted not to pass and more gutted to have blanked. Only the second time in the series have I blanked. Um, obviously came close, hooked a fish, unfortunately had a hook pull. Had I been able to do this whole challenge right-handed, I'm still not sure I'd have been able to, to pass. But I do think I'd have caught. That first 24 hours that we're here, conditions were, were the best um, for, for the session. And I just messed things up, basically. There was fish in front of me, we know that, because I, I hit one on the, when I was leading around. But trying to get a rig in, and the bait in. It was too many casts, too much disturbance. Even when my accuracy was okay and I got the rig on the spot, I wasn't able to feel that lead down properly. And I couldn't 100% say if I was presented on a clean area or it was in weed and I'd have to do it again. And I have always said that location is the most important thing. You do all the hard work, you find the fish, but if you mess it up by having too many casts and too much disturbance, it's all for nothing and that's definitely what happened and I think to illustrate that point my one bite that I did have that came about when I found fish and I was able to to swing a rig in position the first time of asking control the lead so it made just the, the slightest little plop when it went in and the bite came less than five minutes after doing that and I think that just illustrates it perfectly but it is a blank I am gutted and I guess all that's left for me to say is thank you very much Adam Booth for your challenge but its challenge failed. Literally all I've done is moan and swear. <laughs>